Well, it seems like a good day for a trip, so I'm headed out to Brea, California. I'm going to pay a visit to Craig and Vicki Richardson. Vicki serves sons Kevin and Kyle their morning meal at the table. But the family dreams of breaking bread around a cozy breakfast nook. Right over here is where we're looking at. In this corner? Mm-hmm. Right. So this is going to be L-shaped? Right. L-shaped. Oh, exactly. All right. Mm -hmm. All right. Any other features that you'd like to incorporate into this? What we'd really like to have also is some storage um, for the games and the art supplies that may be under the benches that they could put their stuff in. So a hinge seat of some sort. Uh -huh. Exactly. With that in mind, we sketch out the look of the nook. So these are the dimensions of your corner here, three by five feet. That's kind of what I'm thinking here. Pretty basic, a little mm -hmm. curved end on here like this. Mm -hmm. And then these lids right here will hinge on the back side and will lift up from the front. I suggest that Craig and Vicki measure a comfortable chair to determine okay. the proportions for their new like bench. 16 inches deep. inches deep. And 18 inches tall. Okay, that'll work. We're going to build the benches for our breakfast nook out of two by four frames. We'll add back supports, front panels, a back panel, hinged seat lid, and finally, decorative end panels. From our drawings and measurements, we create a cut list, an inventory of each piece of wood we'll need. We start with the two by fours that will make up the frame. With all of our wood cut to size, we're ready to begin assembling the frame. We lay out the pieces for each section of the base, starting with the bottom. Then apply glue to the joining surfaces and together. attach them together using long screws, which are deeply countersunk. Okay. Got it? Yep. Okay, good. All right, well, those are our two bases. Well, we've finished our frames. Now we're going to cover them with this material right here, three-quarter inch thick MDF, or medium density fiberboard. We'll be cutting this with a circular saw, and we've set it up so that it's sitting on four two-by-fours. You can see the ends of them sticking out right here. The reason we've done that is so that when the saw finishes the cut right here, these won't move, pinch, or bind the blade. Okay, We're great. also clamping an aluminum straight edge to the fiber board. This type of straight edge allows us to make perfectly straight cuts in large sheets like this by serving as a guide for the base of the circular saw. Okay, and that will be the back. Nice cut. With Very all nice. of our cutting complete, we move indoors for assembly and installation. Clamp these together. First, we'll join the two bases together right, with screws. Very nice. Okay, good. Well, that's solid. One bench now. Yep. Next, we apply glue to the front panels and clamp okay, them in place. Then Vicki secures them as she takes her first shot with a pneumatic nail gun. Okay, let's try it right about this mm -hmm. far, right? Whoa! There you go. It's the next best thing to writing in a convertible. Hope she goes. There we go. Now it's time to attach the two back supports. Once again, Craig and Vicki apply glue to the surface, then attach the two by fours yeah. with screws. Now this is the back support okay. for the bench here. Uh, if I left it, as perpendicular as, or vertical as it is right now, I think you guys would find this pretty uncomfortable. Yeah. So I'd like to put some kind of a cant or tilt on the back of this bench. And I think this is going to be the easiest way to do it. These are some tapered pieces that I cut out on the table. Craig table and Vicki nail these tapered pieces to each backboard, creating the slant for the backrest. Watch your fingers. Now we've decided to create curved end panels for our bench. 
So I've soaked narrow strips of wood in water to make them very flexible. As I bend the strips into the curved shapes we want, Craig traces their outline with a pencil. Then we use a jigsaw to cut the pattern out. The first end panel serves as the template for the second. Before we attach the ends, however, we'll install the seat backs. So guys, let's put a little uh, glue on this wedge right here. Yeah. Okay. okay. Get, uh, yeah. those fingers. Now we're ready for our end panels. All right, Craig, we're ready to put our end piece on right now. So I'm just lay this. Then a piece of trim on the top. Should sit right on the top. And we're finally ready to install our hinged seat lids. Uh, this is a piano hinge. This is how we're going to attach the uh, the top. So Vicky kind of. We first attach the hinge to the lid, and then attach the lid a to the tricky. base. Attaching this piano hinge to the. You usually try to get just a couple of screws in first, and then test it. Just drop that down. See if it fits. Perfect. Craig and Vicki finish installing the screws in the piano hinge, and their new breakfast nook is almost done. The Richensons' new breakfast nook not only fits well in their corner, but it will fit a lot under the seats as well.